Okay, uh, J tables in a nutshell, part one is just the very basics of how to set up a J table with a 2D array. Okay, so first we've got a database set up. This is just a very basic database with uh, P number, P name, surname, suggestive pupils called TBL underscore pupils. In my actual NetBeans, I've got a database uh, manager set up. I just copied and pasted the URL from the MySQL connection to my MySQL database, the school one, for the pupil. I just had the username root, password root. And then in my main, I've just got a frame. Okay, so basic setup, database connection, database, database connection, and then my uh, frame. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add the J table to here. So table, add. Oh. Okay, now as you'll see is um, what I often suggest when working with uh, GUI elements, you can actually get the code from how to operate them from within the, the, the generated source. So if we go, let me just name this so it's easier to find. Uh, let me name this to TBL main, very original. And now what we've got to do is we've got to, uh, in our generated code, we take a look at where that is made. Okay, look here, this is table set model equals new J table, and this is where it sets it. And at the moment, there's a null, a 2D object array with null values in it. And it can initialize it with that 2D object array. Now remember, a string extends uh, extends object so a string class is part of so we can just initialize this directly with a, a string array here as well um, but the choice is yours um, as far as the titles is concerned uh, I'm just going to manually enter those that can also be uh, done uh, util utilizing the meta information from the, the, the table in the database um, but that would be version 2 of this tutorial okay, so I've just copied and pasted um, how to work with it from there and now I need to actually get a uh, a 2D array. So how are we going to do that? Firstly, I always suggest separating your um, working classes from your actual user interface. I'm going to create a new class, and I'm going to call this class, or not entity class, fail. Um, cancel, but now it's thinking. Yeah, I froze in the computer. Let me pause it while it's OK, never mind. Cancel. Uh, right click, new Java class. Right, and we're going to call it working. Okay, and we're going to create a method called public. Uh, I'm just going to do it as an object array. Let's do it as a string array. Strings you associate better with, so I'll leave it with a string. Uh, and we're going to call it get pupils. And then now the first thing we're going to have to do is we are worried about the size of it. So often what I, I suggest doing is actually creating a method called get size and that would actually return the, the number of records because we have no idea the number of pupils that are actually going to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an int get size and it's going to receive the SQL statement and then it will return just how many records are in that uh, so we can know the length of um, the length of each uh, item we want. So I'm going to go in size is equal to get size and we're going to have to print out our SQL so let's first come up with our SQL so string uh, SQL is equal to select star from tbl underscore pupil I think that's what it was called uh, yep it is okay and semicolon. We're then going to run that, get the size of that uh, of that statement. We are then going to initially start by declaring our array. So string, and remember always declare your variable that you've got to return and return it so you can get rid of the error and then work from there to populate it. So string uh, double array, uh, so it's a two square brackets instead of one to stipulate that it's a double array and we're going to call it uh, pupils uh, equals new now we know the number of uh, columns there are there's three columns there's the p number p name and p surname um, now I, I always forget which way around it is so it's three and size so there's three columns by well in this case three rows but and um, it could be unlimited so we don't know that and then we're going to return pupils Okay, so our method now should be happy because we've declared, we created and returned uh, that. We now need to populate it with its actual data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go result set. Uh, result. So we, result is equal to 
we need to create an instance of our DB manager, database manager DB min equals to new database manager. Okay, so basically what this is doing, and now again it's gonna this is gonna come up with an error because it hasn't returned anything yet. I'm gonna go DB man, sorry, the uh, exception has not been that query. Oh yeah. So my database manager is going to throw an error because it, it throws an SQL exception. So this will open up a connection to the database. That's what we coded earlier. You should know how to do that. Um, and then here it's going to get the result set of whatever SQL statement I created up here. Now in this case what we're going to do is we are going to add a throws so that makes sure that it actually uh, the exception is thrown so we can handle it later. I always like to handle mine in my user interface so I can communicate with the user and the programmer. Um, and then from there, what we've got now that we've got the result set, we are going to loop through the result set while result dot has sorry dot next, which will do two things. It'll move it to the next uh, row as well as check if there is an extra. Okay, um, I'm going to stop there for a second because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing inside my get size, but in this inside here, all I'm going to do is go R plus plus. So I'll just determine the size of it. And here, I'm also going to have to create a Again, this is throwing the exception, so I need to throw that exception. Okay, so now inside here, what we're going to have to do is we're going to actually want to, we need a counter to keep track of where we are in the array. So it's i is equal to zero, um, and we are then going to increment i each time this loops. So we know where we are in the array. And then we're going to say uh, pupils position zero of the array position i of the array is equal to a result dot get string and we're going to get string of p number. Now you'll notice that p number is actually a uh, integer however if you get string it will still return or just return the, the, the number as a string instead of as a numerical instance. Later on you could convert it if you need to. Uh, so p name now I'm just going to copy paste copy paste copy paste and we want to put this in one two I might need to swap i and these around because I don't remember which way around it is if it goes uh, row column or column row so we'll see so this one is p underscore name this is p underscore surname Okay, so so far all we've done is we've populated a 2D array from the database by looping through the result set uh, which we get from the database manager and then we just populate each uh, level of that array and we've got the size for it there. So easy enough, right? Uh, in case you don't be able to see it, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, I haven't learned that trick recently, I'm still quite happy about that. It does make life easier for record screen records. Um, Okay, uh, it's to hold in the ma middle mouse button by the way, yeah, if you click the middle and you roll. Okay, now uh, in our form, we now want to, instead of having this new object, we actually want to work from our DB manager, so let's just go well, from our working. So let's go and create an instance of our working. So we're going to create a working work, oh my bad naming conventions, I've called working with a small case. Any uh, class should be with a capital case, but cringe. Uh, I'm going to rename it because otherwise I shall. Uh, this is going on the public forum and coders will deny me as a coder. It's like sacrilege. Um, they'll burn me at the stake. Um, I'm angry. Could do it. Don't know if I should, stakes probably. Anyway. Okay, so I've just renamed it properly. Uh, now instead of uh, in my work, I'm going to initialize my working class. Now you'll know when I initialize my working class, um, I've thrown exceptions from where I, what I'm doing now. So what I suggest we do is we go here and work with this. I'm going to create a string uh, 2D array and we're going to call it pupils it's equal to uh, I'm just going to declare it as null for now. Um, the reason being is because we actually need to use it in here um, but we need to surround with the try catch because this is going to throw an SQL exception. So I'm going to say pupils is equal to uh, work. That's not how you spell work. That's how you spell walk. Dot get pupils semicolon, and you'll see there that'll be because I need to surround with the try catch. 
So I'm going to run with the try catch. Um, I'm then going to print out the error to the programmer. Give it a nice logical error message, plus then uh, send the, message, the error message actually through and one to the user. Okay, now in here we're just going to literally say instead of saying new object, we are just going to send through uh, pupils. And again here we could actually also just send through in a single array. Um, it doesn't have to be manually coded, but I'm just going to manually code it because uh, I'm lazy like that. So this is pupil number, this is uh, pu, let's just put the name. And this is surname. And there is no fourth. So, okay, so that's that done. Okay, so now that should work. So, literally, we just created a 2D array and we populated it through. Let's run this. Uh, yes, that's the one I want to run. Let's hold thumbs. If it works first time, I'm always impressed, but it doesn't often work first time. Okay, well, no errors. Run the right class as the main. There it is, but there's an error message. Oh, driver found. Okay, um, the reason why that didn't work is because I actually haven't added the 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 uh, the my the SQL driver to this class. Um, I must sort this out properly so it doesn't have to be done each time. Uh, but literally, all I'm doing is I'm adding the MySQL connector to uh, that. Uh, particular program so now I've got the MySQL driver so I know that this this class knows how to connect to that database okay let's hold thumbs ah there we go so it works second time <laughs> okay not too bad but uh, as you see it's populated the J table um, let me just zoom into this code a little bit so as you see I just literally uh, get pupils which get the 2D array and then from there what I copied and pasted across I just replaced the array with the pupils array that I created from my working class and then new string there Okay, bye.